Astronomers recently discovered 12 copies of a sunburst from the early universe. An international team of astronomers led by Hakon Dahl at the University of Oslo observed a galaxy 11 billion years old in no fewer than 12 multiple gravitationally lensed images using the Hubble Space Telescope. The discovery sheds light on a pivotal period in the history of our universe, the age of reionization. How did it come to be that there are 12 identical galaxies in the universe? Could something similar happen in our galaxy? Is it possible that there are more Earth duplicates in space? Let's find out. The arcs of light visible in a new Hubble image aren't weird artifacts or smudges on the space telescope's lens, rather they're distorted and reproduced light of a galaxy 11 billion light-years away in the foreground. At least 12 duplicates of the galaxy dubbed the Sunburst Arc and designated PSZ1G311.65-18.48 streak across the sky. Astronomers can learn so much about the universe because of this phenomenon. We're all aware of how alluring gravity is. As mass increases, so does the gravitational pull, which is invisible and mysterious. Gravity gets stronger as an object gains mass. Moreover, gravity wells can affect the path of light as well as physical matter. On the scale of the galaxy, this means that something with a lot of gravity, like a cluster of galaxies, can bend and magnify the light of something far away behind it. There was a name for this phenomenon predicted by Einstein termed gravitational lensing. Researchers frequently employ it to peer into the early universe and examine galaxies that would otherwise be too faint to discern. This lensing effect can even create numerous views of a faraway galaxy, creating several copies of the same object. That's exactly what we're witnessing with the sunburst arc, albeit in far greater numbers than normal. The sunburst arc's light is being bent and split by a huge cluster of galaxies 4.6 billion light-years away from us. A total of 12 galaxies can be seen in Hubble's image, with three located in the upper right and the other two in the lower left. Sunburst Arc is a bright-lensed galaxy even at a considerable distance because of the power of the lensing. Some of the replicas of the galaxy are 10 to 30 times brighter than the original, allowing scientists to see details as small as 520 light-years across. When we examine this galaxy, we're looking back 11 billion years into the history of the universe because the light we measure has taken 11 billion years to reach us. During the first few hundred million years after the Big Bang, massive amounts of ionizing radiation were emitted by the universe's youngest galaxies, causing the intergalactic gas to become ionized. Scientists are still puzzled about how so much radiation could escape through the dense gaseous envelope surrounding these newborn galaxies. Some star-forming areas and nebulae can stretch across that much space, even if they appear little to us. These galaxies can then be compared to younger galaxies in order to understand the evolution of galaxies. Therefore, scientists might study a level of detail not normally feasible for such a distant object. This ionizing radiation is unobservable in almost all galaxies. It is shielded by neutral hydrogen gas within the galaxy, intergalactic space along the line of sight to the galaxy or within our own galaxy. It is also possible to examine the ionizing properties of the galaxy's stars through the gas-free core channel, which is not possible in nearby galaxies, not even in our own Milky Way. Like the early galaxies, our galaxy includes neutral hydrogen, which prevents ionizing light. The only way to see it directly is to look at galaxies that are so far away from the Milky Way that cosmic expansion stretches the light to longer wavelengths that aren't absorbed by the gas. However, such far-off galaxies are usually too faint to be studied in detail. An ionizing photon from the sunburst arc is far enough away from us to benefit from its effects, and the gravitational lensing effect magnifies it enough for us to benefit from its data quality. It's an uncommon find, 
But the researcher's good fortune didn't stop there. There is a natural lens in the foreground galaxy cluster that magnifies the sunburst galaxy's light a hundredfold after it has traveled 11 billion light years. Normally, distant galaxies fill only a few pixels on our detectors and provide little information on how physical conditions vary with location within the galaxy. It is possible to see up to four different versions of the same object when the galaxy cluster acts as a strong gravitational lens. However, the Hubble Space Telescope photograph revealed 12 enlarged images. Using gravitational lensing, astronomers were able to see the sunburst arc up and personal, giving them a hitherto unattainable look at the places where ionizing radiation is escaping. This has allowed scientists to explore the galaxy at a level of detail previously unattainable for such distant objects. Before this, neither the galaxy cluster that operates as a gravitational lens nor the sunburst arc was recognized. About 600 previously unknown galaxy clusters were discovered in this fashion. However, these new Planck detections had to be confirmed by optical telescopes on the ground in order to prove that they were, in fact, real galaxy clusters. The researchers named it the Sunburst Arc after comparing it to sunlight shining through a break in the clouds and noting that it is particularly bright compared to other arcs, just as the sun is quite bright compared to other stars in our sky. It has also been shown by Hubble that the Sunburst Arc is an analogy to the very first galaxies, which were formed roughly 13.3 to 12.8 billion years ago during the epoch of reionization. After the Big Bang, the universe was filled with neutral hydrogen and was utterly opaque. Then something came along and ionized the hydrogen, restoring transparency to the universe. It's very hard to see things from that time, so it's proving tricky to figure out the exact mechanisms that took place during the epoch. High energy radiation needed to ionize hydrogen in the early universe had to have been able to escape galaxies without being absorbed by the interstellar medium, which is a challenge for astronomers. Only a few galaxies have been discovered to be capable of this. However, a clue can be found in the sunburst arc. It was instantly apparent from the data collected that ionizing radiation had been escaping through a tiny channel in an otherwise opaque medium. Every new piece of information we get sheds additional light on the circumstances surrounding the epoch of reionization. The sunburst arc's photon leakage may not have been the primary cause, but it could have played a significant role. The optical illusions of the universe could be a ruse to deceive us. Researchers identified large abundances of three elements in a clump of red giants, dying stars in the latter stages of their evolution, fewer than three light years away from the Milky Way's black hole in 2018. The high concentrations of scandium, vanadium and yttrium baffled astronomers, who came up with a variety of ideas to explain the phenomena. If the unusually high levels of elements result from old stars falling into the black hole, one theory holds, or if they are neutron star collision debris, then another theory holds. Researchers from around the world recently came up with the most recent of these theories. They contend that the observed concentrations of certain elements were unnaturally high. Rather, the elements were most likely a mirage all along. Scientists first discovered these elements by using a spectrometer to record spectral lines. Scientists use this method to determine how much light an object absorbs or emits. Scientists can use this information to figure out what an object is made of, since various elements emit or absorb light in slightly different ways, called spectral lines. Scandium's light response properties are unique compared to vanadium or other metals. According to researchers, scandium lines comparable to those detected in the latest study were discovered in red giants in our own solar neighborhood. However, they did find that when the red giant was cooler, the spectral lines were stronger. There was no evidence that the star contained more scandium, vanadium or yttrium. Because temperature could alter the measurements, researchers believe these electrons in these elements behave differently at lower and higher temperatures. 
That's so, the lower temperatures of red giants, which are significantly lower than our suns, could be to blame for creating this spectral line mirage. Until we better understand how these lines are created, they concluded, those spectral lines should not be utilized as a measurement of these components. The researchers continued to measure spectral lines from various stars in the Milky Way to learn more about their composition. Using the Hubble Space Telescope, scientists will be able to study the galaxy in even greater detail. Nebulae like the Orion Nebula are powered by radiation from stars in our own galaxy. Despite this, astronomers have never gotten a good ultraviolet spectrum in the ionizing wavelength range for an O star because the radiation is blocked somewhere along the line of sight by neutral hydrogen. With the Hubble Space Telescope, the Sunburst Arc provides an unprecedented opportunity to measure this radiation. Among other things, this will shed light on how large binary stars, which have a different ionizing spectrum than single stars, contributed to the reionization of the universe. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.